have it. The closing bell at the New York Stock Exchange ending another trading week on Wall Street. It was a bit of a roller coaster today with major stock indexes seeing both positive and negative numbers throughout the day. But the Dow Jones did end the day relatively flat down around 45 points. It was a similar story for the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq, which both had ups and downs, but also ended mostly flat. Senior columnist at Yahoo Finance, Rick Newman, joins us now for more. We thank you for joining us, Rick. What was the drive? What was driving the market today? The job uh, report and it, job numbers don't normally affect stocks directly. They affect stocks indirectly because what they tell us about what the Federal Reserve might do, and markets just can't figure out what's going on right now. There's just a lot of confusion in the uh, economy and in the markets. Obviously, we had a great jobs report today, 372,000 new jobs in June. That's, that's excellent news. That was more than economists expected. And that tells us the job market remains really, really strong. The problem with that, if, there, if you could say there is a problem, is that this means the Federal Reserve still thinks the job market is too hot, probably, which means they're going to continue this aggressive pace of interest rate hikes. And that probably means at their next meeting coming up in late July, it's going to be 75 basis points or three quarters of a, of a point. Uh, they're going to raise short term interest rates. So higher interest rates are bad for stocks. So when you get a good number, the inverse logic of markets these days is when you get a good number on jobs, that means the Fed is going to have to uh, stay tough on mon monetary policy and tighten up. So in a way, bad for stocks. Um, at some point, this economy, economy will be more stable, but right, right now, nobody really knows where it's going. But I have a question, Rick, though. Do you think the fact that we saw these strong numbers today that people weren't really predicting kind of goes against the narrative that everyone sort of wants to believe because everyone wants to believe the same thing, which is that we're heading towards a recession and maybe, <laughs> you know what I mean? And maybe it's pointing to the fact that we might not be. Totally. And I, I think you're right that people want to think we're in a recession uh, I mean, we're practically talking ourselves into a right. recession. That's what I we're that's talking ourselves like, yeah. oh, the recession is coming. And then we say, oh, no, maybe the recession's already here. <laughs> well, wouldn't it be great if the recession started and ended and it's already over? Maybe that's what's going on. But look, the, the bottom line here is you never in, never in modern history have we had a recession when the unemployment rate is as low as 3.6%. Right. And uh, the economy is creating close to 400,000 jobs per month. You almost, by definition, cannot have a recession while that is happening. <laughs> now, that, one of the that's the takeaway. The yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, so one that, of the and therein lies the takeaway, <laughs> our aha moment for for us lay people out there. You cannot have a recession with job low when job <laughs> numbers are below four yeah, percent. Yeah, that's right. When unemployment is below yeah, five yeah. percent. You've got it. That's your rule of thumb. So why are people so gloomy? And the answer is, uh, if you want one proxy why, for why people are in a terrible mood, it's $5 gasoline. There it is. Uh, when yeah. people see gas prices that start with a five, that tells them something's terribly wrong. Now, gas prices have come down a little bit. The peak was $5.02 in mid-June, and they're now down to about four seventy. So that's better. But even gas prices that start with a four are bad. Yeah. And I think what it's going to take for people to really feel like things are okay is gas prices that start with a three, mm -hmm. uh, you know, get gas prices under $4. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. It's possible it could happen by the fall. But I think until we get uh, gas prices down and, you know, also food prices and some other things, people are just going to feel like it's a recession. Yeah, yeah, food prices are also incredibly high right now. Yeah. And, and those are so what you people have to drive in a lot of places and, and have people to have to eat it's those basics right it's the it's basics, once those right. basics are straining your wallet it's hard to feel like everything is rosy right rick yeah absolutely and people are right about that um now consumers do have a pretty good cushion at this point uh people saved a lot of money uh during the all the COVID lockdowns when we couldn't really travel and nobody wanted to go out to dinner uh, so people have saved money, but that savings, uh, consumers are spending that money down and, you know, things are definitely getting tighter. Yeah. Now we are going to get the next uh, inflation report next Wednesday on July 13th. Many economists are saying that they are seeing declines in wholesale prices, commodities and things like that. And then that and that that should carry through to uh, an improvement in uh, in uh, overall inflation. Oh. But it's going to take time. We're just not likely to see inflation, but, which is now 8.6%. We're not likely to see that turn around rapidly. Give but, it 
a but, few months, maybe six months, and maybe we will. Rick, we, we might not see it turn around rapidly, but I think people would like to hear we've already reached the apex. Is that possible? And that maybe we're slowly coming down from there? Is that? It is possible. Um, now, there are a lot of economists, and I'm, uh, mm -hmm. in, as somebody who follows those economists, I thought we probably saw peak inflation two months ago. Uh, then inflation came down a little bit, but then it went even higher mm -hmm. uh, in the latest reports. So, uh, it, 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 there's there are reasons to think that 8.6 percent is the peak. Um, the one confounding factor here is the uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. Yeah. That is that is going to keep oil and energy prices higher than they would otherwise be for as long as that war is ongoing. But even there, what we're seeing is people are starting to conserve a little bit. Um, they're doubling up trips and things like that. At the same time, we're seeing a little All bit right. more oil come onto the market. So that's why we're seeing. An improvement in gasoline prices. So it'll take four months, you know, to know to know did we peak and is the is situation improving. But for all your viewers and the ordinary people you're talking about, they're not going to believe it when they hear me saying it on TV. They're going to believe it when they see it in, in the stores, yeah. Yeah. when they see it uh, at the gas station. Absolutely, yep. Rick Newman. Thank you so much for your financial Bye, insight. Guys. We appreciate it. Thanks.